Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is a quick video on the things you need to know about bracing domestic dwellings. I'm going to be going over the principles of bracing design, ceiling diaphragm, and show you a couple of bracing options that you can use in specific situations. Let's get started with this diagram. Wind produces horizontal loads on buildings that must be transmitted through the structure to the foundation. In a conventionally constructed house, these loads are transmitted to the ground by a complex interaction between the walls, ceiling and roof structure, and floor structure. So what we've got here is wind force on the roof are transferred to the ceiling diaphragm and then carried down to the floor via bracing walls. The same applies to the wind force on the top half of this wall which are carried to the ceiling and down to the floor through the bracing walls. The wind force on the bottom half of this wall, represented by the yellow arrows, are transmitted to the floor diaphragm and down to the footings through bracing walls. The same principle applies to the wind force acting on the ground floor wall. So you can see here that the wind force on the top half of this wall are transferred to the floor diaphragm, then it engages the bracing wall and the load is carried down to the footing. And finally, the force acting on the bottom half of this wall are carried direct to the ground via the wall and footing. To illustrate this explanation better and reinforce how important the diaphragm system is, have a look at the image on the right hand side. Here we're able to visualize how the ceiling will distribute the wind loads carried from the wall to the bracings. Now let's have a look at the image on the left. Imagine that the ceiling has been removed. Without the diaphragm system, the wind force will not be distributed out to the bracings and the walls will become unstable and try to bow out. Think of a cardboard box. As soon as you start cutting off the sides, the box becomes less rigid and more unstable. You will come across a situation like that in two-story buildings where a full-height void region exists between the first floor and ground floor. These void regions commonly fall within stairwells and entrance lobbies. In this case, a wind beam can be used to resist the horizontal wind loads and prevent the wall from bowing out. Let's have a look at a couple of issues that you might encounter when you're designing a house. As I explained before in the first slide of the presentation, half of the wind load acting on the wall is transferred to the floor and the other half goes through the ceiling to the bracing wall. When it gets to the bracing panel, it creates a racking force and it's carried down to the foundation. You can also imagine this bracing panel as a cross bracing. For wind forces coming from this direction, this rod here will be in tension and this other one will buckle away in compression. Now what happens if we cut off this panel to install a garage door for example? The load pad will remain the same until it gets to the lateral panel which now has only these two narrow sections of wall to resist the racking forces. So how can we deal with this type of problem? We've got a couple of solutions. The first one, if you can leave between 600 or 900 millimeters of wall, you might get away with plywood bracing at both ends. These would be the cheapest options that you can provide to your client. If the portion of wall left is between 250 and 600 millimeters, you might get away with K-frame or power truss to carry the loads down to the foundation. K-frame is a steel truss frame that can be made of SHS welded together, while power truss is a proprietary lightweight metal truss frame. On the other hand, if the width of the wall left is less than 250 millimeters, you might have to consider designing a portal frame system. The portal frame can be either in timber or steel. The idea behind this option is to create a frame rigid enough to provide high lateral capacity. The portal frame can be made of hollow sections like SHS or uh, RHS or open sections such as UBs, UCs or PFCs. Another important point I would like to touch upon is the spacing of bracing walls. 
AS1684 presents a table with the maximum distance between bracing walls according to wind classification, ceiling depth and roof pitch. The shallower the ceiling diaphragm, the closer the bracing, the bracing walls need to be. An easy way to understand this concept is imagining the house as a wind beam. The deeper the beam, the higher its capacity to distribute the forces out without deflecting too much. If you have a look at this deep diaphragm, the force can still reach the bracing panel, while in the shallow diaphragm, the forces cross the whole ceiling without engaging the bracings. As a final comment, for the ceiling diaphragm to work properly, the ceiling sheeting must have direct fixing to the roof or ceiling framing. Okay, so for instance, um, suspended ceilings will not work as a diaphragm and if you wish to use suspended ceilings you will have to look for an alternative solution to brace the structure. Maybe um, speed brace or another type of bracings. So that was it for today. Hope you learned something new. If you have any questions or suggestions just drop a comment below and thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.